So let's go back to that Jablonski diagram again. And uh, our Jab Jablonski diagram, right, is just showing those uh, those grand and those excited states. So we've talked about the singlet versus the triplet. So this is S0 and uh, this is S1. And slightly lower in energy, we've got our triplet state here, T1. And we're assuming we've got a compound here or a substance here so with a, an, an even number of electrons. And with an even number of electrons, typically the one with all paired is the lowest energy. It's not always true. And of course, with an odd number, there's no way to have a singlet grain state. So kind of take this with a little pinch of salt. So uh, we're going to draw our vibrational levels over top. So again, our spacings, uh, according to the harmonic oscillator model, right, they're consistently spaced. And if there's some anharmonicities, right, they'll be a little bit closer together as we go up. So again, we're sort of trying to be as quantitative as we can without being too quantitative. So there's our singlet one, and here's our triplet one. So, okay, let's draw, there we go, five levels here. And so what happens, right, when we uh, shine light on this molecule, as we uh, shine light on the molecule, we promote from the grain vibrational state to an excited state. And we've already learned before that almost all the molecules are going to be in the grain vibrational state of S0. So that spacing is just so massive that only a fraction of a percent will be in the V equals 1 or the V equals 2. So they're almost all going to be in this grain vibrational state here. Okay, so we shine light on the molecule and uh, we uh, promote to one of the higher states. So what are our possibilities here? Uh, well, we can go from uh, zero um, to zero up here, and uh, this would be our lowest energy um, situation. We can go from zero here uh, to one up here. So these are the vibrational quantum numbers here. We can go from zero to two and so on, right? Zero to three, zero to four, whatever we've done. So zero, one, two, uh, three, and I guess for consistency that would be four. So uh, these are our absorptions here, and we've got um, a way to represent these, actually. Uh, we normally start with uh, the excited state quantum number, and uh, we end up with the grain state quantum number. And then for an absorption, right, so if this is the grain state uh, vibrational quantum number, and this is our excited state vibrational quantum number, for absorption, we're going from the grain state to the excited state. So we draw the arrow here from right to left. So that's our normal notation. So this one here, this very first line here, uh, would technically be our zero, uh, zero. And this line all the way up here then would be our four, uh, zero. So looking something like that. So that uh, first one is our excited state. And our second one here is our grain state. And for absorption, we're going from grain to excited. So the arrow points to the left. Now what happens when we get up to those excited states is that those excited states typically do a process called internal conversion. And so when they're in these excited vibrational states here, they often just drop down uh, in a process called internal conversion. So they can drop down typically one at a time and uh, normally they find themselves in this V equals zero state here. So the green arrows here represent uh, IC uh, or internal conversion. And what I mean by internal conversion is the molecules essentially converting itself from these higher excited vibrational states to these grain states. And typically it's radiationless. Um, so that is to say, when it drops down these levels, you know, it's not kicking out infrared photons. Or if it is, they're being absorbed by solvent molecules surrounding them. So typically we don't see any uh, infrared light coming out of these molecules. And what can happen next? is once they got down to the grain vibrational state in S1, then they can drop down to uh, S0. And so we see a series of lines that typically all come from this uh, V equals zero state in S1, and they can come right back down again. And depending on the Frank Condon factors, right, some of these may be uh, more probable than others. And so these are uh, what we call emission, uh, but they are in the terminology here, fluorescence. So we've got fluorescence when essentially you've got a transition between a singlet and a singlet state. And actually, I think I probably did it the wrong way around, didn't I? So we go from the excited state to the grain state. So I think my arrow should actually point in the opposite direction, I suppose. So singlet, singlet conversion is fluorescence. And we can name these just as we did before. So the very first line on the left, so we're starting out in um, the uh, zero excited state, and we're going to, let's see, zero, one, two, three, the fourth grain states, so that would be zero, four. 
and then 0, 03, 0, 3, 2, 0, 1, and this one here would be 0, 0. And so we could see these on an energy diagram, right? I'm sorry, we could see these on a spectrum. And uh, gosh, let's see, we are normally plotting these against wavelength. And so we remember wavelength as we increase, right? This is a lower energy. And as we decrease, this is a higher energy. So we got to kind of reverse our thinking here. And uh, the red part of the spectrum is uh, absorption. And so uh, if we ask ourselves, you know, what's the lowest amount of energy that's going from uh, zero here to zero here? And as we go to higher and higher energies, that's going from zero to four, let's say. And depending on the Frank Condon factors, right, one might be more preferred than the other. So I'm going to kind of draw my spectrum here, sort of from right to left here. And uh, I've just done the first four transitions here. So here's three, four, and of course, there'd probably be more wiggles here. And so this one here corresponds to uh, zero, zero. Okay, and then this one here would be uh, uh, one, zero, I suppose. And this one here would be two, zero, and three, zero, and uh, four, zero, and so on. So let's get my arrows right there. So this is my absorption spectrum here. And if I look at fluorescence, you know, what do I have here? Uh, well, I've kind of drawn it from left to right here, but you can see the highest energy one is going to be the far right-hand one here when we go from zero to zero. In fact, uh, the amount of energy to absorb going from zero to zero should be exactly the same. Okay, let's switch to another pointer. So this energy here going from zero to zero should be exactly the same as the energy you get out um, here going from zero to zero. That's a lot of zero, so it should overlap at this point here, so the spectrum should essentially overlap here. And as we look at the other lines, uh, what do we see? Uh, was we're going from zero here to one here, that's lower energy, zero to two, zero to three, zero to four. So each one is given off a little bit less energy. And in terms of wavelength, if it's less energy, it's longer wavelength. So if we draw our other lines here, they will kind of mirror our absorption spectrum, but they'll mirror it in the opposite direction. So what are we seeing here? The left-hand blue line corresponds to the 0, 0. And then as we go on, then it would be 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. And the Frank Condon factors, right, would tell you how intense these peaks were. So uh, these are our fluorescence here. So uh, we've got uh, an overlap at 0, 0. Okay, when our absorption, our fluorescence is exactly the same energy gap, but absorption is going to be going to higher and higher energies, and fluorescence is going to be to lower and lower energies. So our general spectrum looks something like Sometimes the vibrational structure is not very well resolved, so uh, sometimes the spectrum looks, uh, gosh, kind of more like that for the absorption and uh, something like that for the fluorescence. So uh, sometimes you don't see that nice fine structure. Uh, it's kind of nice when you do. But anyway, the gap between the absorption and the fluorescence peak is referred to as the Stokes shift. So uh, after George Stokes, who was a physicist, I think an Irish physicist, and so the Stokes shift is telling us here about the difference in energy between sort of the average absorption and the average fluorescence. And uh, it's commonly reported in terms of wavelength, although honestly a 50 nanometer shift makes uh, more of a difference in energy for low wavelengths and high. And so some people prefer to report it in terms of energy and, uh, you know, the wave number is proportional to energy. So it might make more sense to report the Stokes shift, say, as 10,000 wave numbers rather than, say, I don't know, 50 nanometers, let's say.